Arctic grayling used to thrive in streams in Michigan's northern lower peninsula until the early 20th century. Gone now for nearly 90 years, the Michigan Arctic Grayling Initiative began working in 2016 to restore self-sustaining populations. The initiative, comprised of more than 45 partners, has focused its work on a variety of areas to increase their chance of success, including extensive field research. One research project is focused on remote site incubators, also known as RSIs, with the thought that in-stream rearing of Arctic grayling will be critical for long-term success. So an RSI is a remote, a remote site incubator, and I usually describe to the lay people as just an incubator that we put fish eggs in, that we can hatch them in the stream. The innovation of the RSI is uh, twofold. One is it exposes to the eggs and larvae to the natural environmental conditions in the stream, so they get the temperature, the light regime of that site, and also it allows the uh, eggs and larvae to imprint on the stream. And imprinting is uh, focused on chemical cues and it sort of helps each stream is unique in that it's chemical cues so fish can imprint to a specific location in the stream. So if they are migratory or move around in the stream, they sort of know where they were born and they can go back to that site. There are several goals in regards to the remote site incubator research. The goals for this are First is to just see how we can operate these in our streams. You know, since it's quite a bit different system than out west, and we've learned a lot on how to place them and what um, difficulties we've had with sediment, sand, um, and that sort of thing. And then, you know, once we get all these in place, um, after a couple years of operation, we're hoping to have, you know, kind of a basic SOP, standard operating procedure, and how to put these into a stream so that when we get to the point of um, DNR, tribes, other people putting them in, you can kind of look at a, a basic little playbook. Okay, you need to kind of put them here. You need this much gradient. You need this much flow through the RSI. So how does a remote site incubator work exactly? A series of pipes, or conduit, are strung together upstream so the water uses gravity to flow down to the incubators themselves. This fieldwork indicates RSIs need approximately a gallon of water a minute in order to operate effectively. Once there, the water flows from the bottom of the bucket upward, passing through the egg trays. As the bucket fills, there's an outflow pipe that sends the water and any swim-out eggs and larvae into a collection bucket. A five-gallon paint strainer catches those fish, which can then be monitored and counted by researchers. For, from an experimental standpoint, we know how many swim out and exactly on what date or what interval time dates they swim out. This initial field research has been using rainbow trout eggs as a substitute for Arctic grayling eggs on tributaries off the mainstream of the Manistee River. Ideally, it would be to use Arctic grayling, but we don't have any Arctic grayling in Michigan to do our experiments with. So we're using rainbow trout as a surrogate for Arctic grayling, primarily because they're also a spring spawner, uh, which is similar to what grayling are. There's so much to be learned through the remote site incubator work, which makes this research truly valuable. And just to get a better understanding of how they function, um, what ways we can do to improve their functionality, and then um, ultimately be prepared for when we get grayling eggs. I don't think we'll end up having uh, one way to do it, but we'll be able to provide agencies and the tribe as they move forward with uh, suggesting, you know, here's the strengths of this protocol, here are the weaknesses, and that sort of thing, so they can make better informed decisions. In the meantime, and while the remote site incubator research continues, much of the rest of the work of the Michigan Arctic Grayling Initiative focuses on the value of partnerships and working together to reach the ultimate goal, fish in the water. It's returning a species, you know, that was predominant somatid in Michigan streams that is no longer here. Um, and, you know, back in the 80s, the state tried to do a reintroduction. There was some limited success. And the, the opportunity for anglers to go out there and actually harvest or actually just catch and release the fish was very limited. So hopefully we can get to the point where we have self-sustaining populations and people can come out and enjoy and, you know, enjoy these fish. When grayling eggs do get here, we'll be ready to go. For more information on the Michigan Arctic Grayling Initiative, visit migrayling.org.